it's not a great week for uh, we're we're losing uh, some greats this week. Daniel Johnston first, and then uh, just a couple of days ago, Rick Ocasek from the Cars passes away at seventy five years old. Uh, I and the amount of press it got took me by surprise a little bit. Uh, just like how what a wide variety of of publications and people were talking about. Uh, the loss of uh, of Rick Ocasek um, made me feel good because I've always loved the Cars. The Cars' first album was one of the very first albums I ever asked for for uh, as a gift, and I got it. And I literally played that thing till the um, the grooves wore out. Like you, you that album was so important in its time. And if they'd only done that album, I do think we'd still be talking about Rick Ocasek. But the fact is, they. They did something almost nobody ever does is have an incredible debut and then followed up with a, a second record that is maybe not quite as good as the debut. But if, you know, if the car, if Let's Go had been the car's first album, we would still be talking about Rick Ocasek today. Very few bands can pull that off. Um, uh, and, and, and then they also throw in the other records. The Shake It Up was another huge album. And then like their biggest album, I think probably for sales was Heartbeat City. By then I have to say, I wasn't as interested and I definitely did not buy Door to Door. I think the one that came after that, but you, you, this is one of those bands where you can't go wrong with any version of the greatest hits that you comes out. There's probably 10 at this point. Um, they're all, they're all great. Uh, even the super deep ones. And you pretty much could buy the first two records, Heartbeat City and Shake It Up. And those are end to end going to reward your ears. Uh, so, the, so you mean, uh, okay, you, you said the, the first two? The first two and then Shake It Up. I think oh. you have to, just because the song Shake It Up was like a such a huge single. And it, that album has Since You're Gone on it, which I think is one of their, they've got some songs that are just, criminally overlooked the they're like uh, yeah the, their should have beens are better than most bands wases you know like well, yeah go ahead so so my uh my example of uh kind of something that gets overlooked there uh in in the discography because panorama not you know not really a good album or anything but the song touch and go on that yeah that's I, great yeah that's one of my favorite uh car songs Definitely underrated. Um, and uh, that is a song that John Lennon talked about in the last interview he ever did. Um, he talked about it and said that was like an, in his mind when he heard that song, he, he understood that it was possible to... It, it, actually, what he said at the time was, is like, I just released Just Like Starting Over, which is a 50 song done in an updated 80s style. And what he was thinking about was that that's what the cars were. The cars mm-hmm. were like that traditional 50s early rock, but it had the, it totally had a new coat of paint on it. You know, it was totally, uh, had had that candy coat again. And it was, um, it, it was something that made a big impression on him. And, and I think, um, actually, that's what makes Touch and Go an interesting record is that's the, probably the one single that I would list. I, I would disagree with John Lennon. Like, to me, that's like their, that's like their most artsy, difficult single of their entire career. Uh, but I, I hear what he's saying. Like that, what he's saying, like John Lennon saw in him, I think what what was, what did make them great was their fidelity to like, they were a rock and roll band. They were played, mm-hmm. on, played on FM radio uh, alongside ACDC, but they were also at the, at the bottom of the dial at the college radio stations being played side by side, you know, with um, the, the punk stuff and the post-punk stuff. Um, that was very uncommon. I can't think of a ton of other bands who pulled it off that off as long as they did. You know. Well, and another thing they pulled off they um, they played around you know a lot with synthesizers, synthesizers, um, and uh, and I think you know managed to to not make those songs sound too much of their time. But I also think that that's because they're they're very good songs. I, I think maybe if if we're talking about lesser material, uh, those those you know because of the way they sound, they might not hold up as well. Right. But you know they're they're just great songs though. Yeah, I agree. Uh, they're a, they were a great singles act who also were a great albums act, and there's really 
there's not a ton of bands like that. I was trying to think of who is the closest analog in recent times, and it's not a tight fit. The closest I could come up with was uh, like Arcade Fire. Arcade Fire produced a string of in, like incredible records in a row. Their debut was great. The second album wasn't perfect, but it was it was a fantastic record that is still a lot of fun to listen to. And you know, so they literally they had a, a great run of incredible albums. But they also, if you go back and look at all of the singles released during that time, if you were to compile them, you'd be looking at one of the, like great singles collections. Arcade Fire is about as close as I can get in maybe Talking Heads were sort of a contemporary in that that regard too, which were with yeah. they had complex albums and and incredible singles too. They're just super rare to have that. Really rare. Yeah, that's that's kind of funny. I I, I wouldn't have you know, I, I don't think you automatically think of Talking Heads and the Cars in the same breath, but yeah, when you think about it, they are they are similar a lot in that way. And they were new wave ish. Like they all were be those guys were all thrown on like new wave festivals together. And and, and I, I don't know if that was super accurate um, for, for all of them. I don't know. Talking heads weren't like a super rock band. Like they don't have much fidelity to the idea of rock and roll, but um, they, they both were playing that sort of new wave ish stuff at the, at, around the same era. Well, yeah. I mean, at, at the end of the day, they talking heads and it, they, uh, they made a bunch of catchy songs, you know, whether. Yeah, whether or not that that is necessarily people's image of them, that's what they did. They they made a lot of catchy songs, and that's what the Cars did. It, so so kind of you know talking about the new wave thing, um, it, that that kind of makes you wonder, you know, what what was behind the scenes because certainly they had the new wave look. Yeah, and uh, well, let me argue that with you. Sorry, okay. <laughs> they were they were old. That, well, right. When that right, first Cars I, album came out, he was 35 years old, man. Yeah, I, I understand that, but I'm talking about the way they dressed and, and what their hair was like. and So th so they definitely had that sort of uh, new wave look. And, and, uh, yeah, and but I he guess... Was, come on, he put up with shit his entire life for being ugly as hell and marrying a woman who was beautiful. Like, yeah. he talked about it. I mean, I'm not, I don't think I'm saying anything that uh, he hadn't had said to him a million times and talked about a million times. Like, they were, in that regard, They their videos, like, that's what's so weird. It's such an ugly band is known for videos, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that, you might think video was watched probably a billion times by now. And and if you look at him, I mean, they, they, they don't, I, I, I know exactly what you mean, because uh, they had, they, they, they definitely had a sh polish on them and shine. And that they, they remind me a little bit of like, um, it's sort of the same spirit that I've always thought the yeah, yeah, yeahs were going for. The yeah, yeah, yeahs to me are, are a child of the cars, or at least Karen O is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in the, in the sense of that, that just, you know, uh, singing, to your, singing, singing along with a record while you're looking at yourself in the mirror type, just that, that just insane youth uh, the the way music feels to you when you're young they 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 were able to capture that way after they were young way after they were young yeah well they they might have had those songs in the hopper a long time you, you just you don't really have any way of knowing right but they but, like they they did like jazz before the cars like i think they were in captain swing and captain swing was like this like quasi jazz like it's like 1973 I'm sure they were wearing bell bottoms and stuff and whatever was appropriate in 1973. But then when like 1979 comes along, they got the leather pants and the skinny tie. It was great. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. That's kind of what I was going for with the behind the scenes thing, because they definitely embraced uh, the fashion of the times, the, the hair of the times, the yep. skinny ties, uh, videos. You know, they, they got way on board with, with the MTV thing. Um, yeah. And, you know, by Heartbeat City, they kind of had that perfected. And maybe that's why, you know, that was such a commercial success yep. is because it certainly got a lot of video play. Yeah. Uh, if I have a if I had one hot take here and it's not really a Rico Kasich take, Drive is overrated. I'm looking here on the on, on Spotify at what people listen to from the cars. And thank goodness most of it is uh, our three of the top five come from the debut album. But the most listened to song by far is drive it's a well, hundred million spins that's that's uh that's benjamin or 
Yeah, so I, 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 I'm not going to hang that on Rick Ocasek, although <laughs> you, he, his fingerprints are all over it. Let's say that. Uh, uh, that's that was when so, I stopped buying cars records. <laughs> yeah, so that that is a song. There, there, you're talking about heavy synthesizers there, yeah. and um, probably not a guitar to speak of on that song. Yeah, and again, I think it's maybe it's not that that album is so bad in terms of the way it's arranged. And Andy Warhol did direct the video for uh, "Hello Again," if I recall correctly. Uh, oh, really? But yeah, yeah, um, it's it's the it's the albums that sounded like that from that era that you know, like think of some horrible botched abortion like uh, Don Johnson's "Heartbeat" or uh, <laughs> you know, like like just just think of the worst dreck that you can think of. And it, it, some of that ladders back to Heartbeat City. Like, fucking Don Henley's uh, uh, Building the Perfect Bee, stuff like All She Wants to Do is Dance. Like, he's an analog guy. The Eagles were, they, I don't, they were never authentic in my mind, but they were definitely trying to present themselves as, like, this analog, organic thing. And then all of a sudden, you just get this synth-up crap, you know. I, I do have to hang some of that on, on Heartbeat City. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, again, that's like I I did buy that one, but I bought mm -hmm. that one when you could do the Columbia House, like get eight records for a penny, you know, and you, the record club. Like Heartbeat City was a record club album for me, whereas the first record and the second record, I like scraped every penny I could get together to get that. Yeah, I, I had a friend uh, that had a cassette of Heartbeat City, and I think he had maybe one other cassette. He just he, he owned he owned two cassettes, right? And Heartbeat City was one of them. I don't. Did the Cars ever play Saturday Night Live? I think they played. Oh, right? certainly. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you what album that was coming off of. Uh, I'm certain they did. Yes. 